everybody, welcome to Chris's Kitchen, giving you a few quick and easy kitchen tips today on how to keep your produce crisper, fresher, tastier, and lasting longer so that you don't waste them and you get the most for your money. You can see I've got some carrots, broccoli, some kale, jalapeno peppers, Hungarian wax peppers, some celery, and some cauliflower. All this just fresh back from picking up groceries, and we're going to walk through what to do to make these last longer in your fridge without any fancy tricks. Just a little bit of quick prep work. I'm gonna take all of this, rinse it in some water, plain room temperature water I got going here. Get all the dirt and gunk off of there from farmers and where it came from. I'm gonna lay that all out here on these tea towels and let it dry and show you some quick, easy tricks to make this last longer. So, all this is going to go in the water and I'll be back in just a second. All right, so veggies are all washed, laid out here, waiting for them to dry. Uh, one little tip that I found is helpful, especially with leafy greens, is if you kind of do them opposite ended every few others and rotate them, as you can see, the carrots and others, it gives you a little bit more space to help them dry so they're not all smushed up in one spot. So some people ask, why wash the veggies before putting them away? Well, this would be a good example. So this Hungarian wax pepper didn't do a real good job paying attention when I was picking it. So you can see that slight bad spot there. So now I know I need to use that one first early on. Same thing with any of your veggies. As you can see with the broccoli here, two heads, pretty similar in size, but I can tell this one, the stem is nice and firm. This one, Stem is super wobbly, feels like rubber. So that tells me, right, this is the one I need to eat first. These other ones will be good still. All right, so we're gonna let all this finish drying for another five or 10 minutes. Don't want it to be completely dry. You still want it to be a little bit damp and I'll talk about uh, why that is um, in just a little bit. So be back in just a flash. All right, so. Now we're ready to start doing our first prep on the vegetables. So with things like carrots, normally what I would do, I clip this off as you can see when I was rinsing them. You could clip them off before you rinse them or while you're rinsing them, it really doesn't matter. I've got all mine ready to go in the compost now. Um, some people clip the tails off here as well if you want. You, know, you can do that. To me, it's not a big deal whether they're on or off. For the carrots, you don't really need to do anything else once you've got them prepped this way, then rinsed. They're essentially ready to go. If you have a Bugs Bunny moment, they're clean, ready to eat. I'm gonna take all these. I've got one of my two veggie trays. So my fridge has the freezer trays for fresh vegetables and produce in the bottom. Two of these basically just took plain old unbleached paper cloth, paper towels, whatever you have handy in the kitchen. This is just two sheets, enough to lay in there, cover the bottom. And that'll help both catch extra moisture but also retain um, extra moisture within with these veggies. So I'm eating that one. These others, I'm just going to lay them down in here. Again, just a little bit of back and forth spacing. Some of these are a little long. We put them in a bit of an angle. So these are all going to go in there together. I'm going to put some broccoli in there with them as well. Now, how you prep your broccoli is obviously a personal preference. Some people love to use the stems. And trim that hard part off and eat the rest of it. I often do that. So what I usually do is just take that main part of that stem off. This I can put in a bag with all those bottoms from these. Save them when I'm ready to do something with them. Sometimes I'll put them in the freezer and save them for making a veggie soup stock. It's really up to you what you want to do with them. You can leave them on. You don't have to take them off once this has all been rinsed. But I find, you know, precious freezer space and refrigerator space. And these all start adding up pretty quick. So being able to clean those up. And also, as I mentioned earlier, when I was rinsing these, right, it gives us the ability to go through and say, oh, you know, there's that really soft, squishy broccoli. I want to make sure I eat that one first. You can also make sure that there's no other bad or rotten spots that you might have missed when you're going through that rinsing process. So again, similar with the carrots, I'm going to take all these and just lay them down in there, a bit of a Tetris origami sort of pattern. Don't really want to go more than one level high with these. If you get them too 
um, stacked up and there won't be air around for them to breathe. But it won't hurt if you have, you know, for example, the broccoli laying on top of the carrots in here. And as long as you're going through them on a you know, semi-regular basis, cooking, eating with them, and they'll all be fine. So this one I know is a little bit softer, so I'm going to keep that um, here in the front so I know when I'm ready to go back to that, that'll be one of the first ones I grab. So I'm going to do that same thing with the other veggies and fill up this tray, which is about done now. And then I'll move on to that second tray, just to show you what that looks like. All right, so got all those carrots and broccoli put away. Now I'm going to turn more to um, the leafy greens. This is where you have to be a little more careful in thinking about how you're organizing stuff from your prep area into your refrigerator and into your storage tray of whatever kind you're using. Um, leafy greens like kales, spinaches, uh, and lettuces in particular like to go bad quicker, as many people know. You end up with that bag of slimy greens or a plastic box of slimy greens in your fridge. Doing it this way will keep your greens fresh if you just put them in like this after you've rinsed them and let them dry a bit into here for at least two weeks, sometimes longer, if you're regularly going in, bringing stuff out, cooking with it. Um, and using parts of it. So what I'd like to do with my kale, I'll keep the stems. Some people pull the stems off completely and just save the green. I'll usually just trim off that bottom sort of end there. Oftentimes it's a little bit dried out or rough. And then those will all go in the compost. So just basically go through, right, trim all those bottoms off. And I won't bother trimming all of these here for you, but uh, you get the idea. So I'm gonna go through and finish trimming all these bottoms um, and then jump to what do you do once you have them all trimmed up like this? And again, as I said, some people would take them right, and they would strip that part of the green off. Maybe they would trim it back to here. Some would take that off completely right, and just have the green. Some people, similar with the broccoli, you could save this. Right? You can eat it if it's a relatively young, fresh one. It's slightly sweet, not bad. Some of them are a little bit more you know, um, stringy and bittery, but these are okay. But either way, you can leave it your vein on or you can take it off. Either one doesn't matter for our purposes here. All right, so I've got all my kale prepped here. Um, just one uh, quick reminder, you know, one of the other reasons it's helpful to rinse all of your produce, especially leafy vegetables, carrots and things, right when you get them back from the store before you put them away, is now this is all rinsed, it's been prepped, it's ready to go. I can pull it out of the fridge anytime if I'm in a rush or if I have plenty of time and not have to do a lot of extra prep to start cooking with that. And also where you get the extra grit and other things out of the produce so that when it goes in your cooler box or chiller here, the drawer in your fridge, it's gonna be as fresh as it's ever gonna be from the moment it left the store, the farmer's market, your garden, wherever it came from. So again, as I said before, I'm just gonna lay these in there. Again, stacking them sort of perpendicular, doing a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle there. Fat ends on one side, fat ends on the other. And again, you just wanna kind of layer that bottom, bit of a Tetris sort of maze here. The goal is that you don't wanna be jamming them in. You just wanna be sort of gently laying them down on each other so there's still got some air, some room for them to breathe there. But you're also using the space you have here as sort of optimal as possible. And so these greens that I cut off in that first one, talking about whether you keep the vein in or not. So these are loose. These are all basically ready to go for a meal. So what I would do usually is, um, often I would just leave this out and cook with it tonight. But if you're not gonna use your kale and your greens immediately, and I would just take this, basically just lay it right in the front, using one of the corners to help you remember that's the fresh stuff you need to use. And then for the peppers and other veggies, I would just lay these in here make a little bit of space next to my greens. I don't have a specific method in terms of which veggies I do or don't put together. I've tried lots of different uh, mixtures and have not come up with one sort of version that seems to work better or worse, or any particular reason that something molds faster or slower because it was with something else. Um, I've never noticed any difference one way or the other. Um, so often I just have one drawer that's all the greens because I usually have at least this much or more. So that's basically two bunches of kale. Um, but in, in this case, you know, it's just a bit of wind, whatever I'm in the mood for that particular day. Okay, so I've got both of these trays loaded up, as you can see here. This one has got my kale and my peppers. This one over here, I've got my broccoli right, and my carrots. Remember, this is the wiggly broccoli I set in front to remind me to cook with that later. 
Um, sometimes, so for example, if I have a big um, thing like a head of cabbage or a cauliflower, um, often what I do is I would put that in kind of one of the back corners and then stack things around it. But as you can see, this is up about, you know, 70% of the top space here. And you don't want this to be so full that it's pushing out and pushing on the underside of the glass in your fridge. Right? You want to leave some space there and air around. And what this paper towel will do, as I said, it'll help suck up some of the moisture, but also retain the moisture um, in these trays. So when you put these um, back in your fridge, that extra moisture and the sort of circulation of the air, whether it's open for fruits or closed for veggies, it will help maintain the freshness of this a lot longer. So I'm going to hop over to the fridge, put these back in, and give you a one or two final tips. All right, so got my two cooler drawers back in the fridge here. Um, broccoli and carrots over here, greens, peppers over here. The side you put them on really doesn't matter. Um, some people I know only have one of these. Sometimes they're up higher in your refrigerator, so wherever it might be. So uh, one little note, different uh, appliances have different settings, but in this case, this has what they call a climate zone with a slide dial, slide dial that goes from veggies to fruits. So as you move that over to fruits, you can see these holes open up that allows for more air circulation. Vegetables tend to stay longer if they have air circulation. So you, for fruit, you want those holes open. For veggies, you want that closed. You want to retain that moisture. So you just want to check, you know, if you have um, fruits in one and vegetables in the other, obviously you'd want to adjust that accordingly. Um, but if you do have the ability to control this, sometimes they come in different forms. Sometimes it's a knob. Um, sometimes there's another vent you can open or close. Um, but you do want to keep that closed or to the vegetable setting to help retain that moisture. And you'll see after, you know, a few hours, this whole underside area will build up some condensation from that extra moisture um, that's been growing in that area. Okay, one or two final thoughts, but that is the key sort of information to help you keep your vegetables fresher, crisper, tastier, brighter, and altogether better um, longer from the store without any special tips, tricks, or other work. So just one final note about um, celeries. Um, often you'll see people talk about putting your celery um, in some kind of a water container or a storage container um, upright with a little bit of water at the bottom. And I found as well that that will definitely help keep your celery fresh longer, and particularly if, if you've not cut the bottom off so you can see the bottom is still there. So what I would do is I'll trim these tops off just a little bit, usually past at about where that nub is on the top. Usually that's kind of brown, dried out area that you wouldn't want to eat anyway. And then I would put them in, you know, an old pickle jar like this one or an old salsa jar, really, you know, a mason jar. It ultimately depends on how right, big around the bottom of your celery is. So in this case, it's actually even a little too big for my mason jar. So what I'd probably do is trim some of these outside ones off and stick them in or, you know, get an even bigger glass jar if I have one around. And then I like to hang on to them after I've cut off, you know, all of the parts that I'm using, put them in some water and let them start growing again. So I don't know if you can see here, there's actually roots um, from one of the two of these. The Some of the top stalks have browned more than I would have liked because um, I need to get outside. They're a little too crowded here. Um, but I'm able to basically make, you know, this head of celery continue on into some future celeries as well. So I get good fresh celery, crispy, longer, and I get maybe a second or third life um, out of that uh, root cluster at the bottoms. Um, so finally, for something like um, cauliflower, usually what I would do, cut back right each of these different stems from the leaf going around, so you just have that main head left here in the bottom. And once you've trimmed all that back, what you're looking for, right, you want to get to this kind of center nub down there. You can cut everything away from there. I haven't found that it made much of a difference in terms of how long it lasts. Um, so trimming all that will save you a little bit of space. Um, if you're like me, where you're often pushed having more veggies than you really have space for in your fridge, um, that's another good way to preserve this and um, take a little bit of space off in the process. So as I said, doing all this prep work with your veggies, um, when you get back from the store, the market, wherever your veggies are coming from, your back garden, your windowsill garden, that few extra minutes of prep time, 10 or 15 minutes while you're already active doing things will save you a lot of time later in the week when you want to be cooking and you don't have a lot of time to be cleaning everything. And as I said, right, you can reach in and grab a carrot, a celery stalk, whatever it might be, and it's already fresh and ready to go. 
So there you have it. Some quick tips and tricks to help you keep your produce fresher, longer, tasting better from Chris's Kitchen. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you again soon.